Hello friends, good evening and welcome to yet another episode of ICPA clinical series where we solve one clinical challenge in each episode. The philosophy is each episode one clinical challenge. And March 2022 has been a special month for ICPA. ICPA Health Products Limited completed 50 glorious years of committed service delivering health products in dentistry and beyond. So it's a golden jubilee that ICPA is celebrating. Another reason is that March 8th is celebrated as Women's Day every year. To commemorate Women's Day, ICP has organized a tripart lecture series, three episodes this month. Usually we have two episodes, but this month we have three episodes. And this month, all three speakers are women clinician educators. And today is the third part of the, the this special series. And today is the 12th episode of the overall ICP clinical series. And today we have a well-known clinician educator, Dr. Lina Rabal with us, who is known for her concept, Root to Restoration, which is her practice philosophy as well as education philosophy. She, she's a very well-known uh, mentor as well. And I would like to tell about another thing that we have introduced. It's a concept of co-host. We have a co-host, woman co-host in every episode. And today we have Dr. Navdeep Dhupar as the co-host from uh, Mohali. Dr. Navdeep Dhupar, after she finished her BDS, she was a lecturer in one of the dental colleges. She worked in clinics and then she started her own practice. And for the last 15 years, her practice focus has been aesthetic and cosmetic dentistry and endodontics. And she's very well aware of uh, Dr. Lina Rawal's work. And uh, let me welcome both Dr. Navdeep Dhupar and our main speaker, Dr. Lina Rawal, on screen. And Dr. Navdeep, you can go ahead, introduce Dr. Lina and take the uh, show forward. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv. Thank you very much for this wonderful introduction. This is really a special occasion for me where I'm getting this privilege to introduce my mentor, my inspiration. A very warm welcome to all the lovely audience. Today is such a beautiful evening where I'm introducing my guiding light, Dr. Lina Rab. Dr. Lina Rawal has completed her BTS from MNBC Mulana in 2006. She has a clinical practice of 15 years in Zirapur, Mohali, which is primarily focused on endodontics, aesthetic, and cosmetic industry. She's an avid endo lover and has, a, and has a passion for endodontics and cosmetic dentistry, which has motivated her to pursue her fellowship in contemporary endodontics from Diva Patel University, Navi Mumbai. And she has also won Fellow of the Year Award for the same. She's an outstanding dentist, a very humble and caring human being, and a fabulous teacher. She has her, she has her training academy under the name of Route to Restoration, he has been conducting workshops from the last so many years, especially on endodontics and cosmetic dentistry. He's a national and international speaker. He has published a lot of articles on her composite and endoclinical cases in various national journals. He has also won Outstanding Dentist of the Year Award in 2017 in the most prestigious Pendant Oscar Awards, which was held in Mumbai. He is also a keen opinion leader of Coltine and Ergo in India. Last but not the least, he is the first Indian dentist who is a silver member of the world's largest endodontic society called Style Italiano Endodontics. Firstly, I would like to add this that I have learned immensely from Dr. Dina. I have gained so much of clinical expertise after doing the aesthetic dentistry course. It has taken my clinical practice to another level. The way she has inspired me, I'm sure that her work has been and always been an inspiration to our budding dentists. Thank you so much, ma'am, for always being there, for being such a wonderful mentor, for patiently listening to me and clearing all of my doubts. So without further ado, let's listen to a very demanding and interesting talk. Minimumetic restoration. No post, no crown dentistry. Now, welcome Lena, ma'am, and I would like her to commence the lecture. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Dr. Navdeep. 
thank you, Dr. Rajiv and uh, uh, Dr. Navdeep for the wonderful introduction. Good evening, everyone who are here to listen to me. Uh, Dr. Navdeep, I know you from since long now, and I must say you are doing a great job in dentistry. You are not doing less work than me. The only difference is I'm posting my cases and you are not posting the cases. That's the only difference. So yeah. <laughs> without uh, wasting the time, we will switch on to our um, topic. So before switching on the topic, I just uh, want to just uh, convey one thing that we all want to learn biomimetic restoration. What is biomimetic restoration and composites? But there are a few points which we are always missing. So to start with the topic, uh, we all want good restorations. We all want to know about the composites. But what is the main thing which comes in the mind whenever we think of composites? Definitely aesthetics. Yes, we all need very nice, good smiles. But we always forgot some of the points. Like There was a survey uh, by, done by the Colgate where they have taken these three images where you see three beautiful couple. And in the first image, if you see, uh, the first thing which we notice is there is food lodgement in uh, man incisors. But one thing which we are missing here is we missed noticing that this female is having one extra finger. Uh, Dr. Lina, we are not able to see the next. I think you are, you are stuck in the first slide only. Please make it full screen. Okay. The presentation is not moving. Now? No? No, no, no. Wait. No, go to, I think you should go to slideshow and from the beginning, click on. Now is it visible, sir? No. No, okay, I'll just. And now, now the slide, now the presentation is moving. Now we have come to the next slide. Okay. Is it okay now, visible? It should become full screen now. It is not yet, but you can, the slide is moving. Can you move your slides a little bit? Yeah. Ah, now it is moving. Yeah. It is full screen now? Not yet. No. It is not in the presentation mode. You can go to slideshow on top. Yes. Uh, go to extreme left yeah, from beginning. From beginning. Is it fine now? No. It's okay. You can continue. So the slides are moving or not? We have, the, we, have the three, we have the three photos, that slide, vertical. Okay. Now this is the uh, next slide. Yeah. Third slide. Slide number three we are on. Now you are able to see it? Yeah. Is it fine now, sir? It's not full screen, but you are on the, the we are on the right slide now. Trying to do it full screen again. It's fine now. No. Now it is moving or not, sir? Just go back to the first slide and come to the third slide. No slides are not moving. Ah, now they are moving. Okay, I now think I should. Way. I think I should move it like this only. Now is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. But it is not no, full no. screen. That is, is it fine? No. It's not full screen, but you can continue like this only. Is it full screen now? No. Mm -hmm. 
think. Remove that presenter view. Yeah, now go and click on the, from the beginning. Is it full screen now? No, no, no. It's okay. You can continue now. Yeah, uh, slides are moving or not, sir? So go back to the first slide. Yeah, this is the first slide. No, no, no. This is huh, okay. Move, move ahead, move ahead. This is the first slide. Okay, move ahead. Next slide. Yeah, this. No. No? Okay, no. so I sh I think I should continue like this only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do like this only. Now it is moving. It is moving, but it's not full screen. I don't know why it's not. Okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. So according to the Colgate, they have done a survey where uh, in the first picture, the man, uh, there's a food stuck on the man uh, incisors, but we have not noticed that this female is having one extra finger. In the second image, if you see, again, first thing which we notice here is the food got stuck in man uh, incisors, but we missed noticing that there is one extra hand on the man's shoulder. In the third image, again, there's a beautiful couple, but we again, the thing which we notice first is uh, there is a food lodgement in man um, maxillary incisors, but we missed noticing that he is having a one ear missing. So this is uh, these pictures show that how important teeth are for us, how important aesthetic is for us. So what uh, you all need to uh, practice this biomimetic restorations to uh, if you want to practice minimal invasive dentistry you need to practice no post no crown dentistry what are the main things which you should keep in mind in my opinion isolation in the is the only thing which you should practice which which you you should learn because without isolation you are not going to practice bonded dentistry because the bonding agent is wherever the saliva is bonding agent is not going to work there if we see, I uh, mostly divide my uh, uh, restorations in two parts. One is pre endo buildups, then the post endodontic restorative options. In uh, pre endo buildups, uh, this is more of the endo part. In post endodontic restorative options, we have option of crown, amalgam restorations, GIC restorations, dual core resins, indirect inlays, onlays, and overlays and composite direct and semi-direct restorations. I practice mostly composite direct restoration nowadays because I have all the armamentarium with me nowadays. Initially, I used to practice semi-direct restorations also because I was not having all the armamentarium with me. Sometimes I practice inlays, onlays, overlays also that, that are indirect inlays, overlays. But crown is only the 1% in my practice. I'll tell you why I'm not giving crowns. Now, we all know that we uh, need a dry field if you want a, your bonding agent to work. So coronal seal is very important if you want to practice bonded dentistry. Because uh, if you see, uh, whenever you are doing restorations, there is you need to retract the tongue, you need to retract the cheeks. And if you are not retracting it properly, there is continuous flow of saliva, everything. So what we all expect from our restoration is, that we can retract the tongue nicely and we can retract the cheek nicely. But in reality, what happens is there is a lot of saliva seepage in the mouth and we are like struggling literally to hold the tongue back. So to get rid of all these things, we need a peripheral seal because for bonding enamel, dry bonding of the enamel is very important. For that, only one thing you should start practicing is placing a rubber dam. If you see the image, how nicely all the tissues are retracted and there is no seepage of saliva, how clean, nice working field is there. So practicing bonded dentistry become very easy if you are using a rubber dam. Okay. So this is one more important thing which you should keep in mind while uh, practicing minimal invasive dentistry. Before starting the treatment only, you should have think about the final outcome. 
before taking your air rotor in hand and before taking uh, your diamond burrs, always think twice before cutting the enamel. Why? Because enamel is the most strongest portion of the tooth and most of the lo load bearing part it takes. All the tensile strength, tensile stresses enamel is going to take and then these uh, uh, stresses are transferred to dentine. So if you have cut the enamel, what left uh, below is dentine, which is very soft. And if the tensile strength stresses come on dentine, with time it will flex and it, there are a lot of fractures. And if you have put a crown on the dentine, then definitely with time due to flexure, the dentine will move and the crown will fracture. So the main thing for the minimal invasive dentistry or no crown dentistry, you should preserve as maximum enamel as possible because in a literature, the bond strength of enamel is 27 megapascal and for the dentine is 24 megapascal. This 27 megapascal, you can achieve 100% if you have isolated the tooth well, if you have isolated the periphery. And periphery, you can nicely isolate with the help of rubber dam because dentine bonding is moist bonding and we are not sure whether you have achieved this 24 megapascal or not. But definitely this 27 megapascal of bond strength of enamel, you can achieve 100% if you have isolated the periphery well with the rubber dam. Because what will happen uh, most in most of the cases, like in a class two cavity or in a class five cavity, uh, there is continuous seepage of saliva from the gingival sulcus. So we, by no means, with the uh, with the help of cotton rolls or any other means, you are not going to stop that seepage. For that, you need at least retraction cord, and the best medium is using a rubber dam. Uh, we all have heard uh, this term called hybrid layer in on here and there in the social media we all have heard that what is hybrid layer uh, for that you need to know that tooth is mainly made up of hydroxypatite they have some of uh, the collagen and some traces of water so what will happen whenever you etch the surface what etch etchant will do 37 percent phosphoric acid is agent which we are using it get it removes some of the hydroxypatite from the tooth structure now tooth is left with residual hydroxypatite some of the collagen and some of the water so what will happen after agent when you apply the bonding agent now what the bond will do bond will fill the spaces which are created by the agent and when you cure this layer it will become it is called the hybrid layer so hybrid layer is made up of resin your bonding agent and residual hydroxypatite collagen and traces of water all your bonding protocol how nicely you have made the hybrid layer this is this will uh, uh, help you in the longevity of your restorations if you have made a nice thick hybrid layer then your restoration will not dislodge uh, patient will not feel any sensitivity this is the main uh, thing with composite restoration that people say that there is whenever we do composite restoration patient feels sensitivity so for that you need to achieve a good hybrid layer and to achieve a good hybrid layer again you have to go to the first point of isolation with a rubber dam one more thing which we all are uh, not able to follow in routine we can isolate the tooth okay nicely you, you are etching the surface nicely but where we are lacking is we are not saturating the tooth nicely with the bonding agent you it is mandatory that you have to place the bonding agent you have to rub the bonding agent nicely at least for the 20 seconds after agent application if you have just apply the bonding agent like this and you are not taking time to apply the bonding agent definitely the all the spaces which are created by the agent they are not saturated with the bonding agent and the patient feels sensitivity after some time and your restoration will get dislodged so you have to take out at least 20 seconds extra for application of bonding agent uh, there is one term called immediate dentine sealing you can get a lot of articles on google about the immediate dentine sealing uh, article says that if you cut the dentine if it's a freshly cut dentine then it takes up the bonding agent very nicely and the bond strength of the dentine improves if you seal the dentine immediately after preparation if you are doing a direct restoration definitely it should be only a single 
sitting procedure. If you are doing an indirect restorations, then what you have to do is first you prepare the cavity, etch the surface nicely, definitely after isolating the tooth. Then you have to apply the bonding agent, cure the bonding agent, and then you have to apply a thin layer of bulk flow or the flowable composite, whichever convenient to you, and then cure it. In this way, what you have done is before taking the impression, you have sealed the dentine, you have sealed the tubules, and there is a no contamination of the dentine during the multiple visit procedures. So this is a must-to-do step if you are practicing indirect restorations. Right. This is a procedure where you have prepared the cavity, then you have placed the agent, dry the tooth, apply the bonding agent nicely and cure it and apply a thin layer of bulk flow composite and cure them. Now the tooth is ready to take impression. Uh, this is a main thing like whenever you are preparing any cavity, whether you are performing endo procedure or your routine composite restorations, Always try removing caries from periphery. Never start digging the tooth and from anywhere. Always remove the caries from periphery. First of all, your enamel should be free of caries because the, as I told you, your enamel bonding is a dry bonding which you can achieve 100% and the enamel should be free of caries. Second is dentino enamel junction. Your enamel and your dentino enamel junction should be free of caries because Dentine bonding is always a compromised bonding because there is continuous flow of gingiva, this, uh, fluid from the tubules, dentinal tubules, right? So uh, we are not sure whether we have achieved that bond with the dentine or not. But definitely, if you are enamel is free of caries, if you, you have placed a rubber dam and there is no caries on the dentine or enamel junction, then your periphery is already sealed. Pardon, sir. Is it uh, visible now, this slide? Visible, visible. Now, what are the uh, points which, which you, you should keep in mind while uh, doing uh, no post, no crown dentistry? Like after removal of all the caries, you should measure all the cusp, especially the functional cusp. If the functional cusp width is less than 3 mm, right, the functional cusp width is less than 3 mm, then we are not going for any direct composite restoration because it is a thin cusp in endotreated teeth. I'm saying if it's an endotreated teeth and after removal of all the caries, if you are planning to give a direct composite restoration, then you should that the minimum thickness of the cusp functional cusp should be 3 mm. If it is less than 3 mm, then you need to reduce the cusp, get a clearance of 2 mm at least from the opposing tooth. And now just fill the cavity with a composite. Now you have two options. Either you do a direct chair side composite buildup or you can take an impression, send it to the lab. They will make an indirect composite overlay or an Emax overlay for you. But if it's a vital teeth, then 2.5 or 3 mm thickness is okay. But uh, in as as we the rule we follow in crown preparations, what we do in crown prep, we are doing cuspal coverage. Same principle we should we should follow for uh, if you are practicing no crown dentistry. We are just removing. We are not taking this uh, uh, unsupported enamel or cusp thickness in our restoration. It should not be half cusp and half composite. Either it should be a full thickness cusp whose width is more than 3 mm or it should be overall composite. So for if you are practicing composite direct, then it, the thickness of composite, composite should be 2 mm. You have all you have this caliper in your clinic, so you can use this caliper to measure the cusp width. And the cusp width, uh, you have to measure enamel dentine both. Only enamel... Uh, if only enamel is there, definitely still the tooth is going to fracture because we need dentine to support enamel. Now, there's various criteria to select your metric system. If uh, in a class 2 cavity, if you have uh, uh, the distance between a class 2 cavity and adjacent tooth is less than 1 mm, then we are going to use thin bands, thin sectional bands you can use. 
in if the distance is between 1 to 2 mm then we can use medium bands if the distance is more than 2 mm then you need some pre contoured bands you can use bioclear matrix bands i'll show you in some pictures how it looks these are pre contoured bands and uh, for this much large area definitely these uh, thin and medium band is not going to work in all the area so you can use those pre contoured matrix band there this was a case i showed you initially you can see old composite restoration there when i removed the this composite there is uh, i have cleared the caries from the enamel then i have removed the caries from dentine enamel junction now comes to the dentine slowly remove caries from the dentine okay now we are almost very near to pulp now without taking risk what i have done here is i have do a, do an indirect pulp capping with the help of biodentine i have placed the biodentine there allow it to set for 15 to 20 minutes it gets sets in 15 to 20 minutes and till that time i have completed the restoration of seven now this is a bioclear matrix it is pre contoured matrix now for a class 2 restoration first we need to do is you need to convert your class 2 cavity into class 1 cavity okay so after removal of the band you can see i have made this marginal ridge and now it's time to do restoration in the occlusal part so this is immediate post op there is no high point and anything in the restoration So these kind of restoration, these are called biomimetic restoration, as we are mimicking, mimicking the nature in form and function. Is this slide is moving, sir? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is moving now now we have the posterior teeth occlusal uh, view occlusal view right two teeth right so uh, these uh, these uh, molar this molar 6 and 5 they are going for the endo treatment what we have done is first we have isolated the tooth nicely and we started removing caries from the periphery now after removal of the caries now it's time to do a pre endo build up now i have made an access and i have placed two matrix band together these are bioclear matrix again now one by one i'm doing pre endo build up first completed with a pre molar now it's time to do pre endo build up of six now this is the endo part this is direct composite restoration now this was a pre op and this is post op now if you see the x rays you can see how nicely composite is adapted in the proximal area um you see there is lot of cases where the tooth uh, is it's not, it's not moving slides are not moving it is still the the mesial uh, feeling that was you know removed and you have done the uh, now now it is moving okay but it is uh, it's a slide show i think without doing that it's not it will not move it's not full screen yeah not the isolation now we are seeing that isolation slide but it it is an animated uh, slide so without i think without uh, full screen it will not Our full, full screen will not work. Yeah. I'll just try it once here.
I think she needs to get back on the screen. She needs to re-log in. Yeah, I guess. May I audible now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were some issues in the network. I'll just stop it. So when I'm clicking the share uh, option now, it's... Okay, what we can do is we can take up the questions that audience have sent. No, I'm sharing the screen, but uh, yeah. there is entire screen option. Yeah, entire screen. Take entire screen. Okay. Is it visible now, sir? Yeah, slides yeah, are visible now. Just try once full screen. Yeah, I'll just, I'm just trying. Yeah, now it's full screen. That's all. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. now just click yeah, on that hide. Good enough. Okay. Yeah. Please carry on. Everything is perfect now. Okay. So should I start now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm so sorry for the interruption, guys. Uh, okay. So uh, this was a case. This uh, tooth has uh, been gone for endo. But if you see one thing... The buccal and the uh, lingual palatal walls are intact. So you can take an advantage here by taking a putty index before preparation the tooth. So before preparing, if you have taken a putty index, 
these are the putty in the index for of the buccal and the palatal wall because we we know that these this these uh, two structure is going to gone off so after placing the rubber dam i started removing caries from the periphery okay. now after removing the caries you see there is uh, this palatal cusp is very thin so i am not going to do a direct composite restoration here so what i'm going to do is the mesiopalatal cusp i'm going to reduce it occlusally and also the mesiobuccal cusp which is a, a thin cusp so i'm going to reduce it occlusally get a clearance of 2 mm and i'm going to rebuild it with the help of putty index later on you see i have removed the caries made an axis and after making axis i put some teflon tape inside the axis you can take this enamel hatchet if you want to Uh, smoothen these enamel margins now put your putty index there on the tooth and mark the prepared tooth on the putty now what we need to do is you need to remake this prepared tooth from the marking till the cusp tip so after etching then you apply the bonding agent and on the putty index i am going to place composite from the marked line till the cusp tip take this putty gently on the tooth and cure it there so when you remove this putty you see you got the mesopalatal cusp exactly same as it was before the preparation same way we are doing with the mesiobuccal cusp and when you remove this putty from the buccal side you got the mesiobuccal cusp exactly same as it was before the preparation so in this way we are not getting any high points at the mesiopalatal cusp or at the mesiobuccal cusp this is called custom shield technique you can see uh, read about this uh, uh, technique more on the google or on style italiano page now it's time to rebuild the proximal area i have used a bioclear matrix here and i have completed my pre endo procedure now before obturation i have taken this picture and now it is see if you see after obturation it is so easy or to work in the center now we have all the four walls intact and we just need to fill the center portion after all the restoration so this is pre op and this is post op if you see the pre op image and the post op image there is a, you will not get any high points if you follow this procedure but this putty index technique we can use only and only if you have the all the walls intact if you see the x rays you can see how nicely composite have merged with the root this is one case grossly decayed lower eight now again start removing caries from the periphery it is a distal mode tooth so it is very difficult to isolate this tooth now i have placed some place some teflon there on the posterior area and built this uh, wall free hand this is access pick and this is post op post obturation if you see the x ray of the same tooth there is a curvature in the mesial root you should not prepare the roots also in root canal you should be minimal invasive again this was the file when i put it inside the mesial canal of the tooth and these much files have been used just to prepare the mesial canal this is the pre op and this is post op image again a tooth grossly decayed lower 7 the most distal tooth again i tried placing my matrix band here with a rubber dam there but i was not able to place the matrix band with rubber dam on so i have removed the rubber dam and i somehow managed with a real matrix this is called band in band technique you can see this uh, technique i have uploaded a video on you, my youtube channel you can go and please check the whole video there in for the you can do deep marginal elevations in such kind of cases where there is most distal tooth and that sometimes isolation is very difficult so you can use this band in band technique to do a deep marginal elevation this is before obturation picture and with obturation this was the tooth lower 7 if you see after pre endo build up this is post and after post endo
So this was a tooth. I have done this case completely under microscope. So there's this pre-op image is a little blurred. Now start removing caries from the periphery. After more caries removal, now here I am a little confused whether to go a little more down or not. So I have taken help of caries indicator dye just to ensure that I'm not removing any affected dentin or any extra tooth structure. You can take help of these dyes and remove any infected part with the help of spoon excavator. Now, this much tooth structure has left after removal of all the infected dentine. Now, if you see on the buccal side, I have reduced all the cusp or both the buccal cusp because uh, those are uh, not full thickness cusps. And on the lingual side, I have kept these cusps. And now it's time to make the, to build the tooth. So I have placed one side the section matrix band and one side, uh, this is your bioclear matrix. First, complete the proximal areas. Then I have done free uh, freehand buildup of composite chair side only. Right. So now these kind of restoration will definitely work because I have followed all the principles of isolation. Mm -hmm. I have uh, uh, this reduced the functional cusp. I have not included my these uh, weak cusps in my restorations. So definitely, it's not going to the more the main problem with composite is. It dislodged most of the time. Composite rarely get fractured. It mostly dislodged because of improper bonding protocols. In anteriors also, you should keep some uh, things in mind. Like for anterior teeth, your cingulum is the strongest portion of the tooth. So if wherever you get a chance to make an access like this canine, I have made an access from the buccal side because there was extensive caries on the buccal side and, and there was a pulp exposure already. So what I have done, I have made an axis from the buccal side and I have, uh, because the caries were uh, too cervically, so I was not able to place the rubber dam here. The clamp was not fitting up to that area. So I have isolated uh, with the Teflon tape and retraction cord, make an axis and done pre endo build up freehand. So this is the work for my first visit. In the second visit, you do all the cleaning and shaping, obturation and it is very easy for me to work in this center portion now. So I have completed with the restorative part. So in this way, you can preserve the cingulum. So if the buccal caries are there, then no need to do your access from the lingual side. Again, a canine case where there is glossary decayed endotreated tooth. I have used a sectional matrix band to contour the cervical area first and then do a freehand buildup of composite in rest of the tooth uh, we all uh, get these kind of cases where there is endotreated tooth non-vital tooth and discolored tooth so what we all think of mostly will give a crown veneer is still a good option if you are not good at composites because shade matching in these kind of cases is little difficult so you can go for emax veneers but still a crown is not an option for me so again, I have done this case in a single visit where I have taken a putty index first, then started removing this infected part and uh, I have prepared it for the veneer. Now place the rubber dam. Now it's your choice whether you are placing the rubber dam before the cavity preparation or you can place a rubber dam after the cavity preparation. But during your bonding procedures, your rubber dam should be there. It's your choice. Like some people found it difficult to prepare cavity with the rubber dam. So it's absolutely fine if you are preparing a cavity first and then putting the rubber dam. Okay. So I have etched the surface nicely. Make sure you have isolated the tooth well and you have uh, isolated these adjacent teeth so that agent will not damage it. Apply the bonding agent and then put your putty there and make an enamel shell. Now to make the proximal wall, I have used sectional matrix band here to get nice good contours, contact areas. Now it's time to mask this uh, discoloration. So what I have here used is I have used a bleach white shade. You can use any uh, company bleach white shade, cure it. And then we are going to apply the dentine shade and over it enamel shade. So after gross finishing and polishing, you see 
uh, there is some like lacerations on gingiva, but that it would be fine after a couple of days. If you compare pre-op and post-op image, I think uh, we got very good results without removing extra tooth structure and the tooth is going to withstand for many years. There was a case, this little incisor, endo treated. Again, if you see after endo, this was a case. After doing endo procedure, this much tooth structure is left after removal of all the caries. So many people, they'll go for post and core and crown here. But I don't think they, if you see the tooth structure, it's very like only the 20% of the tooth structure is left. So if you are going to make a preparation for the crown, hardly any tooth structure is left. Only the dentine would left, which will get flexed and the crown will fracture along with the tooth. So in this case, post is still a, an option for me, but a crown is again a big no for me in this case. So now for bond bonded dentistry, if you need to bond, you have very good, nice, thick enamel free of caries and you have some amount of dentine also. So I have done a direct composite here at the surface. Now make an enamel shell and then build the cervical portion, get a good nice contact there and with a free hand we have completed with the restoration. So you can see how nicely we have mimicked the nature, the shade, the function, form, everything. Uh, now showing you a case of a semi-direct composite restoration, which I used to do a few years back because, as I told you, I lacked some of the armamentarium with me. I have not equipped fully with all the metric systems with me. So what I have done here is uh, I have done completed this endo. It was a refer referral case. The occlusal reduction was already done. So I have after endo, I have filled the cavity with the composite. Now prepare the tooth for your composite overlay. Composite semi-direct restoration I made myself on a material called disilicon, right? So what we have done here after uh, build up with the composite, I have prepared the cavity. Now, if you see occlusally, you you uh, uh, can see that uh, I have prepared till cervical one third. But if you see from the sides, I have not gone till cervical because as we go more cervically, enamel thickness is less and we need more enamel to bond in the center there is completely dentine and composite very little, little amount of dentine right so i have now at this stage i have taken an alginate impression now with this alginate impression we are going to pour two positive replica one in the disilicon this material is disilicon you can read about this material later on uh, on google and in, uh, in the same impression, and this material got set in two to three minutes. So what you need to do is take a gun. It is It comes in a cartridge form and you can just uh, um, you know, take out some amount and you can just pour in the impression. It will get set in two to three minutes. After two to three minutes, you just remove it. And in the same impression, we are going to pour the stone cast. So now with a single impression of alginate, you get two positive replica, one in the disilicon, which you are seeing on the screen, and one on the stone cast, right? So on the disilicon, I have made these premolars overlays freehand with the help of heated composites. Now, heated composites is, again, a uh, different thing to know as in this much limited time, we are not going to uh, cover each and everything, but this is an idea how I make my own composite overlays. So after making your onlays, over this um, dye silicone, it is a compressive material. You can give very nice contacts on it. Now do finishing and polishing of these composite overlays. And you check the fitting on the cast. That is why we have poured a cast so that we can prevent chair side time, right? So I have uh, just checked the fitting on the cast. When patient came to you for the second visit, what I have done is I have etched the surface nicely and you have to, as the composite is already cured, so you need to activate the silica in the composite. So what we are going to do, you are going to apply silane coupling agent on the tooth, on the composite part, and apply the bonding agent on the tooth. On your prosthesis, what you need to do is apply the agent, apply silane coupling agent, and apply the bonding agent. 
and with the help of heated composites again we are going to lute it with the heated composites so after luting with the composites so it is all bonded restoration we have it is not a cemented one it it will uh, like bond with the tooth and make a single component and if you uh, ask me that if this restoration restoration is going to fracture no because it is in the occlusion it is not interfering in the occlusion and the cusps are full thickness in the composite it is not half cusp and not uh, half tooth and half composite it is full composite either it should be a full thickness cusp or it should be a full thickness restoration as you do in your uh, crowns right so this was a uh, till this this was a case completion if you see from the lingual side again you see the merge how nicely the composite has merged with the tooth you will not get these kind of margins definitely with the crown so uh, with the cases that's all with the cases guys if you see from the buckle side yeah so guys this is uh, my page on the facebook called root to restoration where i share all my cases mostly and all my course details there you can go and please follow the page as uh, dr navdeep has said previously i am the first silver member of uh, this uh, world's largest endodontic group which is called style italiano endodontics it is uh, really a great honor for me to be the first member and this is uh, if you want to contact me guys you can contact me on this number so thank you for listening to me patiently because you don't have any op other option to listen to me <laughs> thank you okay. so much ma'am thank you so much it was indeed a very informative and educative lecture from clinical perspective now i have understood and lot of clinicians might have understood why isolation plays such a significant role right so i'm sure all the clinicians might have gained plethora of information regarding biomimetic restorations and how to be minimally invasive ma'am now we have couple of questions people they have queries regarding this beautiful uh, this uh, beautiful concept of no crown no crown no post dentistry and uh, we'll start with the questionnaire so ma'am we have a first question the question is what are fiber reinforced composite restorations what are the indication and contra indications for them okay uh, we uh, mostly we don't need fiber reinforced uh, restorations what we do uh, but in fiber reinforced we place a fiber uh, in the in your composite restoration below uh, at the most uh, basal layer so that you will give more strength to the composite definitely they are going to help yeah. but they are not mm -hmm. going to help much but if okay. you practice if you are using fiber uh, uh there is the uh, threads then it is definitely going to help in your strength of the composite and uh, for if you say the indications and contraindication there is no such contraindication for such kind of uh, prosthesis you can definitely use fiber reinforced composites they are going to help you especially in your endo treated teeth if you are going for a direct composite restoration then if you incorporate fibers definitely they are going to strengthen your composite restoration that's perfectly fine Ma'am, there's a question: How much minimal enamel thickness is required for no endo crown? I guess uh, they want to say that how much minimal enamel thickness is required for an endodontically treated tooth? Okay, uh, as I told you in my uh, slide also that um, if for endo treated teeth, not only the enamel but we need dentin also so that it will bear the stresses. So for uh, an endo treated teeth, the functional cusp width should not be less than three mm. Right. Yeah. Measure the caliper, and then you decide whether you go for direct composite or if you want to go for indirect. If you want to go for indirect restoration, then also if the thickness is less than three mm, then you need to reduce the cusp occlusally, yeah. get the clearance yeah. of three mm, and then you can rebuild it. You can take an impression, send it to the lab so that they'll make an uh, Emacs only for you, or you can uh, make your own composite only also. So at okay. least three mm for endo treated. And the fish tooth. Okay, I'm all right. And the next question is, what is a biomimetic restoration? That um, the topic we which was covered uh, okay. by you. So you can again tell them a little bit about that. What is yeah, a biomimetic bio, restoration? Bio means nature, and mimic means we yeah. are mimicking the nature, nature like. Tooth uh, component they are made up of enamel and dentin. So whenever you are doing any kind of restoration, if you want to mimic nature. 
enamel and dentin. So we need a material which mimic uh, these properties of enamel, translucency property of oh. enamel and stress bearing uh, properties of dentin. So we need a material which is aesthetic, which can bear stresses. So for that, you can use composites. You can use Emacs, any, any bonded oh. restoration. Definitely amalgam is not a biomimetic material because oh. it is not tooth colored. So you need to, uh, it's a material like you, uh, it mimic your uh, uh, form, function, and it form looks function. looks good also. Good also, yeah. Next is, ma'am, how to use matrix band for the proper adaptation in class two cavity? Uh, that's, uh, as I show you in my previous slides, that uh, I have mentioned few matrices, a sectional matrix band, you can use thin oh. medium, and you can use uh, your... Um, uh, bioclear matrix according to the cases for a uh, detailed uh, study i have posted few videos on my youtube channel you can go there and check out in which case you need to use which matrix band all right man. perfect so man, what all teeth can survive without crowns uh i think almost every every teeth can survive without a crown <laughs> because crown As and you you it slides perfectly you can save every tooth yeah, wherever you see a lot of enamel and dentin, definitely you can go for a bonded dentistry. You, you, in, in cases where you have very thick enamel and thick dentin to bear load, then you can give crown. But if there is no enamel, proper enamel, no dentin, or if there is very less enamel left and you have cut that remaining enamel and you are putting crown on the dentin, I don't think this is a wise decision. Definitely, ma'am. Next one, uh, even I also want to learn about it. Can you please explain the biodome concept? Biodome. Biodome is uh, uh, it's a half terminology actually. It's a it's a compressive a compression dome. In compression okay. dome, we have two parts. If you divide the coronal portion of the tooth in two parts, one area is above the contact point, and second area is below the contact point. The part okay. of the dome compression dome above the contact area is called the biodome and right. below the contact area is called the bio ring and in most of the cases patient to uh, came to us most of the uh, this um, bio uh, biodome part the upper part above the cervical area above the contact area sorry it get already like it was due to caries and everything due to repeated restoration it get already distorted so what we are left mostly with the bio rim and this Bye. is the yeah so prevention of this biorim is very important it, it includes your remaining enamel your dentine and also the peri cervical dentine so if you are doing an endo part also try to preserve as much as the coronal portion that orifices right uh, this is called peri cervical dentine yes. so if we have preserved the peri cervical dentine and uh, you you are left with the nice biorim then you can rebuild the biodome on the biorim po portion. So that is why if you are left with the biorim and if you are like cutting the tooth, uh, preparing the tooth for a crown, this biorim again, we are compromising the biorim. So, and the tooth is getting uh, weakened at the neck portion. So it will get okay. after some time with a crown only, the tooth will come like get fractured and it will come in patient's hand. Okay, perfect. The next question is how to manage deep class two cavities with minimal invasive dentistry. Uh, deep class two cavities. It now we are dealing with the depth here, right? So uh, in if you go in a class two cavity, so if it's a deep cavity, you need to use uh, sometimes you need some lasers or you need some cautery to remove any gingival tissue there, so that your matrix band will go till that depth, right? Plus, uh, if you see, if you go more down uh, on the deeper margins of the cervical, if you go down cervically, uh, definitely you're not going to get any enamel. You get mm -hmm. only the cementum portion. And uh, bonding with the cementum is not good. Not good. If you, if you, what you can do is you can preserve maximum of the buccal and the lingual wall, which have enamel intact. Plus, to increase the longevity, what you can do is you can bevel the buccal and lingual walls so that you will get more enamel to bond. Like in this way, you can uh, like you can just bevel the buccal and lingual margins so that your restoration will stay for the longer time. Try to preserve this. All right, ma'am. 
Uh, next question is what leads to the invocation of biometric restoration? I guess they want to say that. Uh, what leads to the bringing up of the concept of biometric restoration? Concept Why this because, concept? Yeah, because we all are going towards the aesthetic dentistry. Every patient wants to look good. Everyone wants to look good. Uh, everyone yeah. wants uh, wants that we need to uh, we get a restoration so that we can nicely yeah. chew food and it will not look bad also that is why most of the people nowadays who are, who are having amalgam restorations now they are getting it replaced with a composite restoration yeah. so biometric is a not a term for uh, patients it's a term for dentist, dentist. patient only wants yeah. aesthetics Definitely, ma'am, because the concept why it has come, because according to me, I would like to add here that during the era of GV Black, you know, the treatment was entirely based on extension for prevention, right? But yes. if we talk about the concept of minimal invasive dentistry, now it is based on prevention for extension. Yes, this is yes, what the biometric restoration is all about. Yes, yes. We need to so replace we mm -hmm. need to replace only the portion which is missing. Missing. Our, exactly. our main motto should be a replacement of the missing part and not cutting the remaining part which we do for a crown another time it's a very good question everybody wants to know and you have covered it already how to prevent the debonding of restorations that is the bonding protocol yes the first thing is um, not to cut extra enamel try to preserve maximum enamel as possible and try to isolate the tooth well. Isolation, as I told you, that composite mostly debond. It rarely yes. gets fractured. There is debonding. And why the debonding is there? Because the bond has not uh, like properly done its job. Because there is continuous seepage of saliva and everything. So, so for that, you need to isolate the tooth well. Isolation. Yes, isolation is the main thing. Main thing, yeah. The next is what restorative materials come under biometric restorations? Um, uh, you uh, composite is one of the material. Emax e also is one of the material mm. which mimic uh, the natural enamel and dentine. Uh, so yes, these, exactly. are, these two materials uh, you can use okay. as a biometric restoration. So next is what is the protocol for tooth preparation of indirect biometric restorations? Okay, for as I do mostly the direct one, but still I'll okay. tell you for indirect restoration, what you need to do is first you need to prepare the cavity, make sure you have achieved nice, clean field, free of caries, enamel should be free of caries, anterior enamel junction should be free of caries. After preparation, okay. just isolate the tooth nicely and do the, uh, your uh, IDS, immediate dentine sealing as I covered in my lecture part also. For immediate yes. dentine sealing, what you need to do is first etch the enamel and dentine part nicely. Then place your uh, bonding agent on dentine enamel both, cure the bonding okay. agent, and then place a thin layer of bulk flow composite over the dentine portion. Okay, so in this way, what you have done is you have sealed the dentine and you have taken an impression, send it to the lab. Now, as it is a, a two procedure, uh, like uh, it's a two uh, sitting procedure. So in, in the first visit, if you have uh, prepared the dentine and you have uh, done an immediate dentine sealing, the, your de dentine is not getting contaminated during this visits. So once your processes has come, then you need to bond these processes on the tooth. So before bonding also, again, you need to isolate the tooth well, etch the surface nicely, and especially the enamel po portion, because on dentine, you have already placed your uh, this... Uh, uh, bulk flow composite so there is no mean like there is no advantage of etching the composite but you need to etch the enamel surface nicely you need to activate the silica on the composite part for that you need to apply silane coupling agent on the tooth and apply the bonding agent without curing the bonding agent on the tooth now on the Prosthetic prosthesis uh, on the prosthesis, Emax prosthesis, you uh, should uh, remove uh, any debris with the alcohol. Then you have to apply 9% HF to etch the surface. Okay. Apply the bonding agent on the prosthesis also without curing the bonding agent. Now, with any dual core resin or pure resin, you can lute the processes on the tooth and then cure from all the sides. Now, if your prosthesis is uh, less than 3.5 mm thickness, then you can use 
composite or pure resin to lutein because any good company curing light can cure up to 4 mm. Okay, but if your prosthesis is like thick, more than 4 mm, then you have to use a dual core resin. Okay, perfect. Uh, what are the best resources to learn about biomimetic restorative sauna uh, industry in India? I would like you, to answer they should come and join your courses the way I have done. Yes, definitely <laughs> come and join my courses. Uh, but uh, yeah. also, I uh, want to recommend uh, one name, Dr. Siva Sangrakar. He is one okay. of the uh, person whom like I like his work a lot and he do a lot of indirect restorations. Uh, Emax restoration. I do mostly the direct one, and Dr. Siva is doing most of the indirect restorations. And I have learned a lot uh, on of these kind of restoration from Dr. Siva Sangra. Yeah. Perfect, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, only two are left. Next is rules for not giving crown other than two mm marginal ridge present on all sides. This is the question. As far as I understand, the question is: What is the best criteria for a tooth to not have a crown? irrespective of the tooth structure left irrespective of the tooth structure left what we uh, have to again the same questions like uh, what we yeah. need to keep in mind is uh, you should have a good nice thick enamel there if you are seeing a thin and complete uh, rim of enamel all around then definitely you go you can go for uh, uh, your bonded uh, restoration okay. don't go for crown if you have only yeah. the enamel left and very little dentine then there is no point in going for a crown okay so how to diagnose whether a tooth needs a post or not and if it needs a post then why not a crown yes good question uh first of all we need to uh, yeah we need to um uh see that what is the purpose of post post is only oh. meant to hold the core material the code post is not going yeah. to help you strengthen the tooth. So, if you see that the, you have very less uh, tooth structure left and there is no enamel, no dentine, and uh, in those cases, definitely I'll take support. I'll, uh, there is no nothing uh, is left on the tooth to hold the core material. In those cases, I uh, place the post so that I'll make a core out of uh, with the help of the post. And in these kind of cases, if you want to put crown, then you definitely need to get some ferrule. You need to do some crown lengthening by removing the gingiva or by removing the bone sometimes. Then only you can put a crown there. Otherwise, uh, what I would suggest, just place a post and make a core make a core with the help of post and then just leave it. If you want to give crown, definitely you need ferrule. For bonded dentistry, ferrule. you don't need a yeah. ferrule. You just need okay. enamel yeah. and dentine. One. Perfect. One. Which fiber post is better and has a good strength? Uh, any any good company fiber post you can use, but uh, what I would uh, prefer is uh, you uh, that post should be the thinnest post. Yes. Uh, just to place just to place a post inside the root, you should not remove any dentine. What I do if I do post, I just take my down pack instrument and remove uh, the gatta parcha like six to seven mm of gatta mm -hmm. parcha from the canal mm -hmm. and just place thinnest post there to hold the core material no need to like drill the dentine root dentine in this way you are weakening the tooth more weakening the tooth more yeah yes yes we have a last question ma'am uh how to restore an endodontally treated tooth without post when the tooth structure is lost more than 50 to 60 percent we have covered that yeah, yeah, I have already covered it, uh, but there is no criteria that uh, how we can um, calculate on that only the 50 and 60 percent of the tooth is left. We uh, we should know that, uh, as I told you before, starting the treatment only, we should know the outcome of the treatment, right? We should have the final processes in your mind. If you have the final processes in your mind before starting the treatment or on the start of the treatment, then you can nicely plan your prosthesis. So, you, so uh, you will cut le less of the enamel. Only the required amount of tooth structure is uh, you you are cutting. So uh, you can uh, you, this this thing you should keep in mind before the starting of the treatment. And if you have a uh, very nice enamel and dentine to bond, if it's a flat tooth also, then you can rebuild again with a composite or indirect restorations. All right, ma'am. We have done with the questionnaire. I hope everybody yeah. they might be happy. They have got their answers. 
Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Lina. It was Thank a great you, session. <laughs> it was very well, very well covered. I know there were many technical glitches, but yeah, you, yeah, that was came all of them, and uh, in the end, everything was good. And uh, I think there are two questions which have come from the live uh, viewers. I'll okay. just read out those. The first yes. question, question is which brand of biodentin you recommend? I am using one from Saptodent. So it okay. is, I think, yeah, it's a good, it's a good brand. Okay. And uh, the next question is, how is the longevity of composite overlays? Yes. Uh, as I told you, the longevity of composite overlays depend mainly on first thing is isolation. And if you are following all the protocols, like if you have removed all the weakened uh, truth structure and you are building uh, building that uh, truth structure with a, uh, and replacing it with a, entirely with a composite, then definitely is going to withstand. Uh, as I told you, it should not be half cusp and half composite. Either it should be a full thickness cusp, more than 3 mm, or it should be a full composite restoration. It should not be half half. So they, they are uh, like going to last for at least 10 years. So that brings us to the end of uh, today's session. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Lina, thank you. for this wonderful session. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Rajiv. Thank you, ICPA, for giving me this opportunity so that I can share my little knowledge with you all. As you know, uh, this amazing. is a very vast, very vast topic to cover in this much time. And I'm really sorry for the technical error. <laughs> Absolutely fine. Absolutely. No problem at all. No problem. So this uh, video will be available on Facebook as well as uh, YouTube for people to go back and watch again. And thank you, viewers, for uh, joining in. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Lina Rawal first for uh, accepting our invitation and giving this wonderful lecture. And uh, I really like the term uh, root to restoration. It covers so beautifully. <laughs> uh, and I really liked it. And uh, Dr. Navdeep, thank you so much for joining in and uh, taking the session to a successful conclusion. And, thank uh, you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, ICPA. Thank you, Lina, ma'am. Thank you. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining in. And uh, this completes our tripart series, the Women's Day special, three women clinician educators that wonderfully covered three different topics. And uh, next session is going to be in the month of April. Soon you'll be announcing it on social media. You'll receive it on your WhatsApp and different social media platforms. So thank you so much. Take care of yourselves. And soon we'll be putting the five-point summary of this lecture for your convenience. You'll receive it on your social media. Thank you once again. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you.